Hello audience. In this video I'm going to restore and paint a set of Model A wheels. Now in doing so, I'm going to show you how I select a wheel that I consider to be usable, how I restore them if needed, and a trick clever way that I get them painted. Now people have asked me for quite some time to make a video like this, and I finally have the opportunity to do so with this car behind me. You may recognize it from the 1930 Ford Model A repaint and interior video series I've been working on. In addition to everything else we're doing to it, it's got a few cracked wheels and all of them need to be painted, so it'll make a good example. Now first I'm going to show you the different wheels used in Model A production, what their differences are, and how to identify them. The first type of wheel, used from the beginning of production through June of 1928, this was used with the early brake system that did not have a separate shoe for the parking brake. Now the easy way to identify these is the thickness of the hub. As you can see it's about one inch or so. Now the bolt pattern is the same from 28 through 31 so these will bolt onto a later drum but they do not seat properly which puts more stress on them and causes them to crack. So these wheels should only be used with the early brake drums. Now there's a rumor going around that these wheels were carried over from the 1926 and 27 Model T. That is wrong. They are not. They are a completely different design and they will not interchange. The next wheel, used from about April of 1928 through the end of the 1929 model year, this is pretty much identical in construction with the previous wheel, except that the hub is dimensionally a little different. As you can see, it's about 3 eighths of an inch wider than the previous one. Now, around this time, the brake drum was redesigned to allow a surface for an additional brake shoe for the parking brake. And because of that, the wheel had to be redesigned to fit it. And I'd also like to point out that the front brake drum was also redesigned to fit the new wheel. So the early system has its own front and rear drums. This and the previous wheel are a 21 inch outside diameter and they're very easy to identify at a glance because they have a small hub cap and the edges of the rim are rolled over as you can see. This is the last type of wheel used during production. It was used for the 1930 and 31 model years. Now the big difference between this and the earlier ones is it has a 19 inch outside diameter. The most obvious difference with this is the hub cap is a much bigger diameter. Also the edges of the rim are flat instead of rolled over like the previous one. The car we're working on was built in mid-year 1930 so this is the type of wheel it would have on it, and this is what we're going to be working on in this video. Now, there are a few differences I haven't mentioned, like how to identify what manufacturer built them and how to match them, but functionally that's not really important. What's most important is that every wheel on one car is the same generation. First thing I'm going to do is a visual inspection. I'm looking for four things with these wheels. If they're bent, they're cracked, if they have excessively worn lug holes, or if they have serious rust pits in them. Now generally, if any of these problems are present, I won't mess with them. There are some remedies for some of these problems, for the sake of argument, that can be fixed. However, in the case of Model A wheels, especially 19 inch, there's a lot of good usable ones out there. There's no shortage of them, so to me, fixing a bad one is just not really worth it. First we're going to look for cracks. Now the most common place these crack is at the edge of the hub, right around here. Another common place is around the lug holes. Now around here, this is looking pretty good. Right over here we can see a good sized crack right there. In fact it's right through the weld for the spoke. Now I remove the paint on this area to make it easier to see, but that's pretty bad. So already I would definitely not use this wheel. 
Now looking on the inside, we can see that that crack has been welded. Seems to be holding. But another thing I've noticed is it's cracked down here. And it's cracked again up here. Where is it? There it is. So I've already found three cracks in this hub. Now I have a theory that some of these hub stampings were just defective even when they were new and just can't hold up. Because here's the thing. At first you could say, well this is cracked from collision damage or something. But here's the strange thing. This one has been welded. The other two have not. The other two are just as obvious as that one. So what probably happened was these two cracks happened later on after this one was welded. So my general rule is if it hasn't cracked after this many years, it's not likely to do so. If it already has, it probably will again. Next thing to look for is rust pits. Now this is more of a cosmetic thing than anything else. Now little rust pits here and there are not really a problem. The paint will fill them in. We're looking for big serious ones. Now since this wheel's already painted it's not really all that easy to tell. But one giveaway is down here. We can see the original weld and the tool marks where the rim was welded together originally. A wheel with serious rust pits, that would probably all be gone. And what that tells us is this is probably just painted over the metal. There's probably no filler in it. And now we'll look at the lug holes. Now these are almost always worn oversize a little, but as long as they're still round and they still have the taper in them, that's not really much of a problem. The thing to look for is if they're worn oval shape which can happen from a lot of driving with loose lug nuts or again if they're cracked anywhere around here or if the taper on them is completely gone or is almost gone. If any of that is present again won't use it. The last thing we're going to look for is to see if they're bent, particularly the rim. Now it's not uncommon to find little dents around here from a tire iron or from hitting the curb. Most of those can be fixed pretty easily. What we're really looking for is runout. Lateral runout and radial runout. Now first we're going to look at radial runout, which is pretty simple. You just attach it to a front spindle and spin it. Now you're not likely to find one that's absolutely perfect, but we're looking for one that's decent within reason. And this one looks pretty good. I'll probably use this one. And checking lateral run out, it's got a little bit of wobble to it. I don't know, if I had a better one I'd probably use it, but this one would work. Another thing I'd like to point out is when checking for run out, if the wheel has a tire mounted on it, it's not good to go by that because the tire could be mounted improperly and make it look even more out around than it is. Well, it took nine wheels before we found five usable ones, and here they are. Next, we're going to send these out to get sandblasted and then see what we have when they come back. And they're back. They cleaned up pretty well. Now, three of the wheels are good to go. A few spokes are a little bent, but that's not really a problem. On this one, after removing the paint, we can see the rim is pretty beat up. This was probably from driving it with no tire, and it's not really going to affect it. It just looks pretty bad, and it needs to be cleaned up. Also, one spoke looks like it's been cracked and welded back together, and the weld is not holding. Probably wasn't welded very good to start with, so that'll need to be touched up. The other wheel it also has one spoke that's been cracked and welded back together. The weld is holding on this one, but it looks pretty rough, so that'll need to be addressed. Other than that, they all look pretty good.
Now the wheels are ready to paint. Now painting a Model A wheel can be very difficult because of all the spokes and how many different angles there are, so it can really be difficult to paint them and do a decent job. Now the person who's painting these has this clever thing here. This is a wheel painting stand made for Model A wheels. And obviously it's handmade out of an engine stand, barbecue motor, and a few random things here and there. And what it does is it holds the wheel in an upright position like this and spins it really slowly. Now with it spinning the wheel, there's two big advantages to that. One is, since the wheel is turning, there's no angle you can't see and no angle you can't get to with a spray gun. The other advantage is, if you leave it turning after it's painted, the paint can't run, which is a big advantage. You can put the paint on really thick and have a really long dry time, and the coating will come out evenly. Now, I didn't get to film the actual wheels being painted, but I'll show you how this works with an extra wheel that I have laying around. Alright, the wheels have all been painted, and they're back. Here's one. I've already installed the tire and the hubcap, and it's ready to go on. Now, the owner chose to paint the wheels black on this car. Now, for those of you who don't know, the general rule with Model A's is the wheels are either black or pinstripe color. And that depends on the body type and trim level and other things, but those are generally the two accepted choices. Now I'm sure many of you are wondering, why didn't I just get these powder coated like everybody else? Now, it's a very common choice. A lot of people are doing that now, getting their wheels powder coated. It's a real heavy duty finish that lasts really long and looks pretty good. It does, however, have its limitations. Now, one big problem with powder coating is when applying it, they use a lot of heat. This heat destroys most body fillers and even body solder. So you either need to start with perfect wheels that have no rust pits at all, or just live with the results. The other big problem is you don't have as many color choices. Now, that's not really a problem with this car, because most anyone who powder coats, they have gloss black. But when you get into these pinstripe colors, a lot of them can get really tricky, because even though they're light colors, many of them are toned down with a lot of gray and black so that when you paint a big surface like a wheel with them, they don't look bright or obnoxious. Now, some of these pre-made powder-coated colors actually do match the factory pinstripe colors pretty well. Many of them, however, don't, and quite often what happens is when people send their wheels out to get coated, they just pick light blue or light green or light yellow, and when they get them back, they're just really bright, and they look really obnoxious, and put them on the car and it almost hurts their eyes to look at it. Now, this can be a good thing, like if you're building a car exclusively for parades or if you just really want to be noticed, that's a good way to do it. The point is, the wheels are a really big part of the painted surface on the outside of the car, so it's worth getting picky about the color. And that's why I always choose to paint them, is there's a much bigger variety of colors with paint. You can get colors custom made really easily. It's just more universal. Powder coating is generally more of an industrial coating that you coat new parts that are gonna be in the weather or are gonna take a beating somehow. Another big thing to keep in mind is all of this is just my opinion. There's nothing really wrong with powder coating. If you just got your wheels powder coated and you're happy with them, more power to you. Now, when installing the lug nuts, there's two things you need to watch out for. Now, the extension quite commonly will hit this part of the hub, 
if you're not careful and it'll chip the paint off. Now what a lot of people do is they'll put a rubber hose over the extension and that helps but generally you just want to be careful and not touch it in the first place. The other thing to watch out for is if the socket doesn't bottom out on the lug nut it can bottom out on the wheel when you get it tightened down all the way and it can remove a ring of paint from around here. So that's why this socket, even though it's in such bad shape, I still use it anyway because it's the perfect size. And when installing these or removing them on good wheels, I just use a ratchet or a breaker bar and I just take my time being really careful. I don't use power tools. Yeah, it takes a long time and a lot of effort, but you only need to chip it once to ruin it. Well, that's it for this video. Now, yes, there's a lot more I could have mentioned, but honestly, I was really in a hurry to get this done. So I tried to just mention the most important things. Now, for those of you who have been following the progress of this car, it's pretty much done right now. Just a few little things to do, and hopefully sometime next month there'll be a video where I show you the finished project. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.